Ji Xingqin is a young lady from one of the wealthy families in the capital, who has been stunning since childhood. I originally wanted to hold on to the script of Salted Fish and cover up the world-famous painter and heir of the billion-dollar group in a low-dot-key manner, but was betrayed by my biological father and childhood sweetheart. Seizing wealth, destroying reputation, constantly forcing. Ji Xingqin sighed and said, I don't want to fight either. It's all because they forced me. People in the capital thought that Miss Ji from the Ji family would suffer from consecutive setbacks, and when she rushed to the front line to eat melons, she discovered something was wrong. The first person to appear behind the scenes in the courtyard on a midsummer night on the list of world.renowned art museums was Ji Xingqin. Ji Xingqin, the founder of Fanqing Publishing House, who has gained international popularity and holds various exclusive copyrights, is undoubtedly the first publisher. The founder of the international charity organization Meteor Shower has publicly announced the list of participants, with Ji Xingqin still ranking first in donations. The Star Group, which is most favored by global scientific research, has issued a statement stating that the behind-the-scenes boss Yen Hezhou married his beloved on a certain day, month, and year. A wedding photo has been revealed, revealing that it is still Ji Xingqin. The entire capital was shocked. Is this the Miss Ji they know who is too lazy to socialize and doesn't participate in any entertainment activities? Yan Hezhou has been rebellious since childhood, and after falling in love with Ji Xingqin at first sight, he embarked on a three-dot-year crazy pursuit. Later, they got together, and Yan Hazu was also framed and expelled from the country by his stepmother, thus having a nearly ten-dot-year cross-dot-border relationship with his crush. He knows how dazzling Ji Xingqin is, so he will do his best to protect her radiance. Sweet pet, long separation reunion, Miss Xianyu's counterattack and face-fighting road keywords of the novel. After the flash marriage, Miss Ji became popular worldwide with no pop-ups. After the flash marriage, Miss Ji became popular worldwide with a complete download of the TXT series. After the flash marriage, Miss Ji became popular worldwide with the latest chapters to read. Chapter 1. Ambiguity and Betrayal. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 1 Ambiguity and Betrayal Venus Hotel in Beijing Ji Xingqin sat on the terrace drinking tea, with the lingering gasps of men and women beside his ears that made his face blush and his heart beat. Seizing wealth, destroying reputation, not seeing your closest person for the last time. If Star's sister knew that you had done all these things, would she still come back to you? Ji Mingyue's voice was sweet, and she spoke the most heartbreaking truth in the most plain tone. As long as you don't say it, she won't know, Song Qingfeng's gaze sank and he whispered in her ear. Ji Mingyue smiled and turned her gaze to the tightly closed curtains on the terrace. The pride in her eyes disappeared in a flash, and her expression was melancholic. But I love you deeply. We have been together for six years, and we have done the most intimate things. But you only want to marry her. Why don't you keep me outside? I won't appear in front of her, I just don't want to leave you. Song Qingfeng lightly rubbed the woman's chin with his fingers, and his gaze was deep as he described the places similar to Ji Xingqin. After a moment, he pondered, let's talk about it later. The room was full of ups and downs, and Ji Xingqin's expression was indescribable. It was heartache, but as expected. Looking at the blooming roses outside the hotel, Ji Xingqin carefully rubbed the wedding ring on her ring finger. After a moment, she smiled calmly and muttered to herself, Oh, it's wishful thinking. At his close friend Su Yan's birthday party, Ji Xingqin met his childhood sweetheart who had not appeared for a long time, and was now being held by his wrist with his angry eyes wide open. Song Qingfeng's strength was quite strong, and the place where he caught him was painful. Ji Xingqin frowned uncomfortable, and his gaze towards the two changed. His tone was cold and impatient, let go. She rarely used this kind of expression to face people she knew, even Song Qingfeng, who had always claimed to know her, was stunned. He noticed that the wrist under his palm was too thin, and the fierce light in his eyes slightly narrowed. When he lowered his eyes and changed his emotions, 
he found that there were many needle holes on the back of Ji Xingqin's hand, as well as some dark blue that could not be concealed. He seemed to have thought of something and was about to ask, but to his surprise, the people around him took a step ahead and said, Sister Xingqin, I'm getting engaged to Qin Feng soon. You must bless us. The speaker was wearing a fairy-like white dress, with an incredibly pure face and flickering big eyes filled with anticipation. This pretentious look of pure anticipation disgusted Ji Xingqin. Seeing Song Qingfeng's desire turn into silence, Ji Xingqin slowly exhaled a breath. Thinking of that day when Ji Mingyue deliberately made herself hear the voices of the two of them intertwined, as well as the truth about those things, Ji Xingqin couldn't help but feel nauseous. Why, do you want me to go to the scene and smash your scene? Song Qingfeng was satisfied with Ji Xingqin's reaction and softened his tone, stop making trouble. As if trying to coax an immature child, Ji Xingqin looked at these two people with a slightly shocked look in his eyes. He couldn't figure out how they could still say these words in front of him now. Ji Mingyue held Song Qingfeng's arm and looked at Ji Xingqin softly and weakly. Her cheeks turned red and she looked shy. Dad misses you very much, and everyone in the family wants you to go home. If you can be happy, Grandpa and Aunt Ji will also be very happy, she said when her mother passed away due to illness, her most respected father was exposed for infidelity, and she had an illegitimate daughter the same age as her. Her grandfather was so angry that he couldn't get up, and the Ji family was also shuffled from that time on. Grandpa is the person that Ji Xingqin admires the most, but Ji Xingqin did not see his last face before his death, which has always been a thorn in her heart. What qualifications do you have to mention them? Ji Xingqin's voice suddenly turned cold. Looking at the two intimate figures in front of her, she only felt sarcastic, and even the smile on her face became unclear. She tried to struggle twice, but couldn't shake off Song Qingfeng. She had to take a step forward and look down at Ji Mingyue. Wearing high heels, Ji Xingqin was even half a head taller than Ji Mingyue. Standing in front of Ji Mingyue, there was an inexplicable sense of oppression. Ming's charming face was twisted, and her eyes were full of disgust. Ji Mingyue, I see that you have been pitifully letting you go. You really treat yourself like a dish, rushing to deliver it out. As the words fell, the music in the hall came to a sudden halt, and even the quiet could hear their own breathing and heartbeat. When Su Yen walked in with the guests, she had just heard these words. She quickly walked over and smiled brightly at Song Qingfeng's unpredictable face. I've told you before, a poor person must have something to hate. Don't always be soft-hearted and indifferent, she said after she finished speaking, she looked at Ji Mingyue huddled next to Song Qingfeng, obedient, as if they were working together to bully her. Suyin frowned and glanced at the people around her who were watching the play. Stepping on someone else's blood and bones to turn over, I feel like I can become a gentleman in the glory of a wealthy family. This idea is wrong. What I snatched is not mine, and I'm sure I'll break my own bone and lose it someday, she said there were too many people who referred to this, and in front of Su Yen, everyone dared not speak up and discuss anything. For wealthy families in the capital, Su Yen stood behind Ji Xingqin without hesitation when the Ji family fell. Even though Ji Xingqin was wealthy and powerless now, no one dared to insult her. That's her, facing Song Qingfeng head dot on and leaning against the century-old tree of the Su family. Song Qingfeng can't say anything yet. His attention has always been focused on Ji Xingqin, and this person who has reduced a lot is still shining brightly. He still doesn't keep his gaze fixed on himself. Song Qingfeng was angry and looked at the dark blue and needle on the back of Ji Xingqin's hand. He couldn't bear to speak ill of Ji Xingqin, so he turned his words towards Su Yen and said, You invited us here just to say this. Of course not. Ji Xingqin took a step back and stood beside Su Yen. She didn't give up on breaking free from Song Qingfeng's hand, but this time it was quite easy to break free. She rubbed the area with red marks, and as she looked up, she saw a man in a black suit walking steadily this way. The crowd around was restless, and Ji Xingqin curled his lips and smiled, 
I asked her to invite you. Su Yen and Song Ching Fong have been at odds since childhood, and their birthdays are always for the sake of Ji Xingqin's face. Later, when he and Ji Mingyue got together, Su Yen lost contact with him directly. When Song Ching Fong received the invitation, he was still surprised, but if it were Ji Xingqin who spoke up, everything would be understandable. What does she want to do? Ji Mingyue stared fixedly at Ji Xingqin, trying to find some clues from his indifferent smile. She knew all the truth that Ji Xingqin would not have any interaction with Song Qing Feng anymore, but what if this woman went crazy? She dared not gamble and had to make a more delicate gesture in an attempt to stop Song Qing Feng. Song Qing Feng had done enough psychological construction for himself. When he came, he had already planned that if Ji Xingqin was willing to give in, he would cut off from Ji Mingyue and marry Ji Xingqin. As long as she was obedient, anything she wanted could be delivered to her. If she were to speak her mind, Su Yen would only mock Song Qingfeng's delusions. End of this chapter Chapter 2 Come and sleep with me You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 2 Come and sleep with me It was you, Song Qingfeng, who maliciously slandered Ji Xingqin with Ji Mingyue first. It was also you, Song Qingfeng, who instigated the relationship between Ji Xingqin and her partner, and attempted to commit murder, leading them to talk about a long-distance relationship for nearly ten years. Fraudulent Mr. Ji's trust and gave the entire Ji family to someone else, forcing Ji Xingqin to have no way out. It was you, Song Qingfeng, who almost lost your life to outsiders. What qualifications do you have to stand in front of Ji Xingqin now? Su Yen seemed to smile rather than smile. She also saw the tall man walking by, and her eyes turned to Song Qing Feng, full of vigilance and indescribable words. Do you really have a plan? Ji Xingqin nodded and said, I've already thought of it. Su Yen pursed her lips and looked sorrowful. Why don't we wait until I find a partner so we can get married together? Ji Xingqin smiled, like a blooming rose, dazzling and charming. She lowered her gaze and looked at the ruby ring in her hand, her eyes overflowing with tenderness. She said lightly, let me introduce you to him later. Su Yen curled her lips and raised her eyebrows slightly. All right. Actually, there's one more thing I'm inviting everyone to do today. My good friend Ji Xingqin has just decided on his life and will send an invitation letter to everyone through my birthday party. She walked around behind Ji Xingqin, reached out and grabbed his shoulder, gently pushing her in a certain direction. Song Qing Feng, who was standing in front of them, instinctively stepped forward and broke free from the confinement of Ji Mingyue, walking towards Ji Xingqin. Please stay away from my wife, said Song Qing Feng in a cold and indifferent voice. He watched as a stranger reached out to block Ji Xingqin and pushed him away without hesitation. Song Qing Feng took two steps back and watched as the man grabbed Ji Xingqin's waist. His wolf-like eyes were filled with tenderness and concentration, and he noticed his gaze. He looked at him without concealment, full of hatred and anger. It was this familiarity that reminded Song Qing Feng of someone. At this moment, as his memory went back, he remembered the person who should have died in the sea. Song Qing Feng gritted his teeth and called out the forgotten name, Yan Hazu. Who is that? He is the person that Song Qing Feng hates the most. Ji Xingqin gently patted Yan Hezhou's hand tightly gripping her waist, as if a kitten was tickling her, causing Yan Hezhou to regain his senses and look apologetic. I'm sorry, I'm late, he said after so many years, he still only knows how to bow down for Ji Xingqin. It's okay, Ji Xingqin smiled and glanced at Song Qing Feng, who was feeling cold all over. He also glanced at Ji Mingyue, who was embarrassed and angry and at a loss behind him. I can't go to your engagement banquet, but we welcome you to our wedding banquet. The invitation will be sent to everyone's homes later. Her smile was always heartless and heartless, making it difficult to see her true thoughts. Their goal was achieved, and Yan Hezhou, protecting Ji Xingqin, left first. The crowd was restless and discussing with each other. Only Song Qing Feng stood among the crowd, burning with anger, 
staring at the backs of the three of them as they left. After completing the task, Su Yen took the two of them to the parking lot and watched them leave. She turned her head back to handle her birthday party. Sitting in the car, Ji Xingqin covered his mouth and yawned, tilting his head to look at the road ahead, thinking to himself that he had just recovered from his serious illness and was still struggling to walk through the scene. Leaving that place of constraint, she can finally relax a bit. Ji Xingqin turned his head to look at Yan Hezhou, who was driving seriously, and described in detail the face that had appeared countless times in his dreams. On the day the company declared bankruptcy, Ji Xingqin couldn't help but run to the moat to get drunk in the evening. He received a phone call from Yan Hezhou and sat with someone at the entrance of the Civil Affairs Bureau for the night, then obtained the certificate. I still find it unbelievable when I think about it now. Ji Xingqin, who was unconscious and drunk without any burden, had a high fever that day and lay in bed for three days before waking up. The first thing she did after waking up was to spin off and sell the tattered company. This company, which had been tossed around by her biological father like a sieve, sold well after the spin-off. Ji Xingqin got a pile of cash and was worried about her future path. Coincidentally, it was Su Yan's birthday, followed by Ji Mingyue's eager display and exposure. Ji Xingqin planned this once, in order to tell the group of people sitting on the bones of her relatives laughing that the Ji family has fallen, and Ji Xingqin has not yet fallen. One day, she will bring back everything that those people have taken. Her gaze was dull, but Yan Hezhou nervously grasped the steering wheel and remained speechless all the way. The two of them returned home, and Yan Hezhou helped Ji Xingqin upstairs to change clothes and wash up, while serving others to blow dry their hair. He turned around and wanted to go back to his room. Ji Xingqin quickly grabbed his hem with a pitiful expression and said, The bear you gave me was thrown away by them. I couldn't find it, and I couldn't sleep without it. Yan Hezhou paused for a moment before remembering that when he secretly ran back to the capital from abroad to see Ji Xingqin, he gave her a birthday gift, a doll bear worth several hundred yuan. It seemed that Ji Xingqin had kept it as a treasure by his side for many years, but now it has been thrown away by that group of people. The tall man pursed his lips and turned to squat in front of Ji Xingqin, holding her hands and asking her seriously, what style do you want now? I'll have someone bring it over. Ji Xingqin shook his head and said, you've all come back. What else do I need a bear for? You sleep with me. Yan Hezu frowned slightly, and the arrogant and domineering person outside began to wriggle and say, Don't tease me, your health is not good yet. He really likes and dislikes Ji Xingqin, but also has a bottom line. After the two officially established their relationship, he likes to be close to Ji Xingqin and cuddles with him all day long, wishing to leave his mark on everyone. K.G. Xingqin fell ill with a high fever, and his body was overdrawn and needed rest. Doctors have said it's best not to get too close to him. Yan Hezu wanted Ji Xingqin to recover his health quickly, so he followed the doctor's advice and it didn't work when he arrived at Ji Xingqin's side. She always followed her heart's desire and decided how to feel comfortable. At this moment, Ji Xingqin's eyes flashed with disappointment. She was born bright and charming like the most beautiful rose blooming on a branch. After being rejected, her whole body was filled with sadness and loneliness, which reminded him of the embarrassment at the entrance of the Civil Affairs Bureau that night. Yan Hezu's breath froze, and he lowered his head and buried it in Ji Xingqin's hands. He compromised, unable to see Ji Xingqin's grievances. That night, Yan Hezhou moved to the master bedroom with Ji Xingqin. He thought he would wait patiently for Ji Xingqin to fall asleep, so he wouldn't be nervous. However, when he came out of the bathroom, he saw the person on the bed holding a blanket, tired and having a fight with his eyelids. Yan Hezu cursed himself for being useless, quickly packed up and went to coax Ji Xingqin to sleep. End of this chapter Chapter 3 Invitation from the Time Bird You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 3 Invitation from the Time Bird While the two were sleeping sweetly, the wedding invitation was delivered to every household in the wealthy circle on time. Su Yen was so happy that she didn't sleep all night, 
so she squatted on her social media to watch those jokes about wall top grass. She also took many screenshots and sent them to Ji Xingqin. One is a wealthy and powerless young lady, and the other is a forgotten dead person. I don't know how many people slapped this invitation. During his youth, Yan Hezu, who had no good reputation, chased Ji Xingqin everywhere. At that time, many people said he was delusional, but Ji Xingqin showed his sincerity towards others and tried every means to protect him, to the point where Song Qingfeng hated him to the bone. Later, there was an internal conflict within the Yan family, and Yan Hezhou was a victim of the power struggle. His stepmother, who was praised by everyone outside, falsely accused him of plotting to harm his biological father, infuriating his own biological father. All the elders of the Yen family stood in opposition to Yen Hezhou and even tried to get rid of the legitimate eldest son who brought the Yen family a bad reputation. Everyone knows that Yen Hezhou was expelled from the capital by the Yen family and sent abroad to fend for himself. They also know that he used to offend many people with the help of the Yen family and was pursued abroad. I heard he died in the sea, but I don't know who moved his hand. Everyone doesn't really care, it's just that the capital city is missing a useless waste young master. After many years, Yen Hezhou, who had been unanimously recognized as dead, returned and really wanted to marry Ji Xingqin. This news is like a heavy hammer, hitting some malicious people with stars in their eyes. In a villa on the north side of the capital, a middle-aged woman sitting in a pajama in the living room, her well-maintained face full of malice and distortion, sneered at the invitation letter and phone on the table, didn't you say that Yan Hezu has died in the sea with your own hands? The person on the other end of the phone didn't speak, obviously he didn't expect Yan Hezhou to be still alive, and even kept in touch with Ji Xingqin. The middle-aged woman no longer trusts her collaborator and her words are extremely cold. Young Master Song, our cooperation ends here. I won't show any mercy to Ji Xingqin from now on. At that time, the Yen family was like a rising sun, and since she gained great power, she did not hesitate to eliminate anyone who could threaten her. Yen Hezhou was one of them, and Mrs. Yen did not show any mercy towards the child she had grown up with. I just didn't expect it Mrs. Yan's gaze twitched slightly. She didn't expect Mr. Ji, who valued his family ties so much, to secretly protect Yan Hezu and help him rise again without telling anyone. Very good, Ji Jia is really very good. Back then, almost all the truth was covered up and dealt with by her. Even if Yan Hezhou came back now, she couldn't find any trace, and the Ji family had fallen, which happened to be an opportunity for revenge. If you dare to oppose her, don't blame her for being ruthless. Ji Xingqin slept soundly, and when he woke up, Yan Hezu was no longer there. She changed her clothes and sat in the living room watching TV. The first news that caught her eye was about Xingyu Group's strong market expansion, which is currently a well-known international luxury enterprise. Ji Xingqin smiled, and no one knew more about Yan Hezu's experiences over the years than she did. And she turned her head to look at the sparrows flying outside the window, soaring in the dim sky. The dark gray clouds covered the sunlight, and the overwhelming darkness made one feel frustrated, giving off a feeling of wind and rain. The weather has changed, Ji Xingqin sighed, picked up her phone, and glanced at the message Su Yen sent last night. She curled her lips and leaned against her pillow, answering the messages one by one. Until the last one, an invitation from the renowned editor-in-chief of the international newspaper, Time Bird. Ji Xingqin came from an art student background and loved drawing since childhood. Later, she was admitted to the Paris Academy of Fine Arts with the best grades. No one knew that she was the most low-dot-key and famous painter in the art world, nor did she know that she opened her own art museum, located in the busiest part of the capital. Ji Xingqin doesn't like to appear in public and always refuses all kinds of interviews and collaborations. Time Bird has contacted her many times and wants to collaborate with her on magazines and personal albums. At that time, Ji Xingqin was busy with Ji Family Company and politely declined several times. However, the editor-in-chief is very patient and occasionally sends a message to greet her.
he also has great perseverance. Ji Xingqin lowered his eyes and pondered, feeling that it was time. He clicked in and sent a message, happy cooperation. Watching the flickering, the other person is typing, at the top, followed by various emoticons expressing inner joy and excitement. May I ask where you are now? Is it convenient for you to be interviewed? I would like to discuss detailed matters related to my personal album with you in person, said Luo Nuowei, the editor-in-chief of Time Bird Ji Xingqin provided an address location for a well-known art museum in the capital of China, a midsummer courtyard. Chronicle Bird Editor-in-Chief Ronover. Got it. After setting the time with the editor-in-chief of the Time Reporting Bird, Ji Xingqin stood up and stretched lazily. After a serious illness, her body was not as good as before. She just stretched lazily and felt sore and weak all over. At this moment, the dark clouds in the sky dispersed, and a ray of sunlight shone through the gap in front of Ji Xingqin. Her eyes moved slightly, and she quickly arranged her itinerary. Let's go to the art museum today. At noon, Ji Xingqin strolled in the art museum to admire his earlier works. The venue was very quiet, with most of the foreigners and students who came from afar to appreciate the paintings. As they walked to the indoor rest area, Ji Xingqin picked up a seat everywhere and sat down. I asked the staff for a cup of warm water and held the cup, looking at the oil painting of the Campanula flower across from me with a distant gaze. This painting was still painted by my mother during her lifetime. At that time, her mother was lingering on her sickbed, her bright eyebrows remained gentle, and even when she was haggard, she could make people feel the resilient vitality. Looking back on his past twenty years, Ji Xingqin suddenly realized that many things had traces to follow. His father, Ji Haicheng, who boasted of gentleness and stability, had deceived everyone from the beginning. She sipped water and noticed the warmth gradually spreading to her limbs, warming up her cold and painful internal organs. Ji's business goes far beyond that, and the company she spun off is just one of the companies with a moderate harvest. When her mother fell ill and Ji Xingqin went to study abroad, her grandfather had already secretly trained and taught her. The spin-off of the Ji family company was not an accident, but Ji Xingqin could no longer see hope for salvation. She decided to completely erase it and start over from scratch. Contacting the Good News Bird newspaper, Ji Xingqin also started preparing. She has been up and down in the business world for a year, and she has been taught a good lesson. Standing in the place where I used to be proudest at this moment is also filled with emotion. After drinking this cup of water, Ji Xingqin threw the paper cup into the trash can, stood up, and walked towards the employee passage. End of this chapter Chapter 4 My miss has finally decided to stand up. You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 4 my miss has finally decided to stand up when he first went to Ji Group, Ji Xingqin entrusted the art museum to the person he trusted the most. Speaking of which, this person had come from Paris to learn painting, but unexpectedly, he eventually embarked on the path of operation and management. Su Ran was waiting for her at the entrance of the employee passage. When she saw the overly thin person, her face was quite moved. She took two steps forward, her voice clear and respectful, boss. Ji Xingqin smiled and patted her shoulder, I'm fine, don't worry, go up and talk. The invitation from the Time Bird International newspaper was briefly explained by Ji Xingqin, and to be honest, Su Ran was not surprised that Ji Xingqin would let go. She followed Ji Xingqin for two years and knew that this young lady had a good temper. Even if someone accused her of plagiarism and maliciously slandered her, she remained indifferent. Recently, the affairs of the Ji family have become a hot topic, which concerns Ji Xingqin. She also knows a lot privately. Su Ran was disgusted by Ji Xingqin's dignified biological father, as well as those who attempted to step on Ji Xingqin's throne. She looked angry at the rumors and only wanted to advise Ji Xingqin not to continue to keep a low profile, but to stand up and fight back under the name of a world-renowned painter. The invitation from the Time Bird is a great opportunity. 
Tzu Ran, who had switched to operations management, immediately had many promotional directions and was pondering which one was more suitable for Ji Xingqin. However, the young lady sitting on the sofa, looking at flowers, said, My goal is not just to increase visibility. In fact, I had planned to transform and develop in this direction before in the company. I want to open a publishing house. Su Ran. Publishing house. Do you want to turn all the paintings in the art museum into picture albums for sale? Ji Xingqin smiled and said, Yes, another thing I came to do today is to invite you to serve as my personal assistant. Yes. Of course I do. Su Ran wept with joy, and her young lady finally stood up. Ji Xingqin looked around the closed studio and sighed with a slight heaviness, struggle is really a joyful and painful thing. Su Ran couldn't help but smile on his face. Ji Xingqin was a pampered young lady who learned to paint because she loved it. However, if she had to put in effort and sweat to do other things, she lacked motivation. Ultimately, it's because it's not necessary. She can get many things without having to fight for them, and on the path of art, it can be said that everything has been smooth sailing to the extreme. Su Ran still can't forget the appearance of Ji Xingqin, who is only 14 years old, standing at an international art exhibition holding a trophy, with a stunning appearance, dressed in a black formal dress, dignified and bright, and incredibly beautiful. That is a truly brilliant star. I will contact Ching Shiwen for the follow dot up matters of the art museum, and he will arrange it. From tomorrow on, you can stay by my side. Ji Xingqin said, sending a message to someone else he valued. Zheng Shiwen. Received. Mr. Ji has returned to China. As per your instructions, the invitation for the Song family's wedding banquet has been handed over to Mr. Ji. Ji Xingqin was somewhat surprised, so he handed over the remaining matters and made another phone call to his uncle who suddenly returned to his home country. The phone was quickly answered, and the person on the other end was still angry, speaking in a tone that couldn't conceal his irritability. Ji Haicheng, this dog, I've always said he's not very funny. Both generations of the Ji family are only daughters, and this cheap uncle was picked up by Mr. Ji during a business trip in Los Angeles. He has been unruly, arrogant, and domineering since childhood, and is a fierce fighter. When he was young, he was the most feared young master among the children of wealthy families in Beijing. Later, a few words almost ruined the marriage between Ji Haicheng and the Ji family. After Ji Haicheng finally got married and stabilized his position, he used some despicable means to force Mr. Ji to send him abroad. Ji Xingqin heard that when he was studying in Paris, Mr. Ji genuinely raised his adopted son as an heir. Unfortunately, he couldn't resist his daughter's infatuation with Ji Haicheng. Although he was sent abroad, he was still given the funds to work hard outside, and after Ji Xingqin was born, he also took him to visit his niece. Ji Qingyan dotes on her niece very much, and he also takes good care of Yan Hezu with his love for his house and family. Ji's family had an accident, and he was the first one who wanted to come back. At that time, he had already bought his plane tickets. Encouraged by Ji Xingqin, she didn't want to disappoint her family's cultivation and wanted to try to bring the company up on her own. I didn't expect to be tricked. What Ji Haicheng left for her can no longer be considered a complete company, even the most basic operating conditions have not been met, and many affairs have been delayed for too long, no matter how much money is invested, there is no sound. Ji Xingqin is not foolish. After trying the water, he left it behind and calculated the current total price of the company. Without hesitation, he sold everything. All the remaining things left by Ji Haicheng are the shares left by Mr. Ji to her. If possible, Ji Haicheng probably wants to transfer all the shares under Ji Xingqin's name. He spent more than 20 years hibernating in the Ji family and calculated to find an industry that Mr. Ji had abandoned. After putting in a lot of effort to obtain the shares in Ji Xingqin's hands, what would happen? As early as Ji Qingyan struggled abroad, all of Ji's industrial focus had already shifted to foreign countries. 
Fishing out Ji Haiching's ambition with a single useless move can also train and train Ji Xingqin, who will never be motivated. Ji Qingyan hangs up the phone and stands beside the French window looking at the dark clouds. Across the street is a group of buildings that resemble a space station in a science fiction movie. Under the oppressive sky, wherever you see, it is dull, except for that group of buildings, which is particularly brilliant and dreamy. It is the subsidiary of Xingyu Group in China. At this point, he couldn't help but marvel at Mr. Ji's accuracy in judging people. Yan Hazu was pursued by his stepmother, and Mr. Ji asked him to secretly protect this child. He said that Yan Hazu has blood and is capable of doing great things. He will have to protect his lazy granddaughter for the rest of his life. Ji Qingyan thought of this and extinguished the cigarette but in his hand with a slight annoyance. He sneered disdainfully at the buildings, My niece, don't I know how to protect her? At that time, the stars were only so big, so I couldn't wait to arrange a date for her. I didn't get enough of cursing, my eyebrows furrowed, and I kept chattering and asking my secretary to send me the latest company information of Ji Haicheng, while watching and cursing. End of this chapter Chapter 5 Growing Old Together You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 5 Growing Old Together There were many people invited to the engagement banquet of the Song family, but with the invitation for the wedding of Ji Xingqin and Yan Hezu, everyone was not very curious about the Song family. I heard that Ji Xingqin and Yan Hezhou will attend, and those who don't like these two families also want to come and join in the fun. Now let's take a look at the guest group. Shout, aren't these the ones from the Yen family? The big guy's face couldn't hide his joy, and he thought to himself that he had come the right day. How could the Song family not see that many people came with the idea of watching the excitement, sighing and not forgetting to smile as they went up to entertain and guide the way, occasionally looking back at the guests on Ji Haiching's side? Except for his trusted friend who he had pulled up, all other seats were empty. Cheating, cheating, being morally upright, having a wicked heart. Everyone in the capital still needs face, and they all feel that without the support of the Ji family, Ji Haicheng has not reached the level that everyone values. Even though he is now independent and married to the Song family, not many people look up to him. It's for the sake of the Song family's face to come and watch a play. The expressions of those Yen family members are not very good. On days of great joy, why do they all look like they want to eat people? Su Yen was very enthusiastic as soon as she entered the door. Her mouth was so poisonous, but she still smiled brightly. Several times, she almost angered Ji Mingyue, but was stopped by Ji Haiching calmly. Ji Haiching's gaze twitched slightly, scanning behind Su Yen in a calm tone. Didn't Xingqin come with you? Su Yen's eyes were almost rolling up to the sky, and she smiled, no, she's probably coming with her husband. Oh, it's still the one you least liked back then, uncle. Now it's quite impressive, the boss of Xingyu Group. Ji Haicheng couldn't help but hear the sarcasm and satire in Su Yan's words. His Ji family is not a wealthy family, and it is thanks to him joining in that position today. Ji Haicheng always boasts of his scholarly background, cultural character, and pride, so he hates people with bad reputations like Ji Qingyan and Yan Hezu. When Yan Hezu was hunted down, Ji Haicheng also contributed to the situation. A younger generation shouldn't have caused him to go into a big fight. However, in some aspects, Yan Hezu was particularly similar to Ji Qingyan, which reminded Ji Haicheng of the words that almost ruined his success. Therefore, without hesitation, he sold Yan Hezu's whereabouts to the Yen family. On that day, Yan Hezhou appeared at Su Yan's birthday party. After returning, everyone naturally had to carefully investigate why Yen, who had been missing for many years, had gone. This check, okay. The Xingyu Group, which is currently ranked among the top three world.class luxury enterprises, is an industry in Yan Hezhou. It also has many subsidiaries, covering various industries such as clothing, auto repair, education and charity. Many people who didn't like Yanhezu back then regret it so much that their hearts turn blue. 
But when they think about it, Ji Xingqin is now a beautiful woman in a vase, useless except for a face. Since Yanhezu has opened its branch in China, they still have a chance. Everyone is thinking that the protagonist who frequently stimulates them these days has arrived. Ji Xingqin walked in wearing a simple black fishtail skirt, arm in arm with Yan Hezhou, with graceful steps and an elegant posture. Accompanied by her bright and charming face, many people sighed inwardly, truly worthy of being the number one socialite in the capital. With this demeanor and posture, she shook off the counterfeit for an unknown distance. She is beautiful, which is widely recognized by people in Beijing. After all, Ji Xingqin's mother was once widely recognized as the most beautiful woman in Beijing, and she could easily defeat everyone in any public occasion by simply facing the sky. Ji Xingqin completely inherited her mother's beauty and added a touch of laziness and easygoing temperament that only belonged to her. Unlike her mother's gentle and introverted demeanor, she effortlessly killed many socialites and daughters who had set up her own character. Miss will always be Miss, always calm and composed no matter when. Yen Hezhou glanced coldly at the crowd observing in the dark, with a warning in his black eyes that was self-evident. This gaze evoked memories of many people's youth, causing them to shiver. In terms of appearance, Yen Hezhou is the best among handsome men, with sharp and delicate facial features that can give a great visual impact when viewed intuitively. Due to his good education, his temperament has slightly restrained his attacking power. In the one Ru Si one that can be seen everywhere in the capital, he fights his way with indifference and violence. Although he had a bad reputation, he couldn't resist being handsome and daring. At that time, he was also a young master whom many wealthy ladies were both afraid and fond of. In the eyes of cultural figures like Ji Haicheng, this kind of thick-skinned appearance looks annoying. Compared to Ji Qingyin, if the two of them stand together, they are definitely a high-dot-value criminal group strolling along the street. Now standing next to Miss Ji, her once indifferent eyes were almost overflowing with tenderness, secretly poking and staring at the restless crowd around her, while also protecting her delicate flower as she walked. It's like... Finally getting the treasure in your hand, not forgetting to take care of it when showing off to others. Damn it, how could they forget that Yan Hezu chased Ji Xingqin for three years back then? Ji Haicheng certainly won't change his view on Yan Hezu, and when he received the news, he was even more disappointed with Ji Xingqin. The previous wife was an extremely romantic brain, and the daughter she gave birth to was also a lover. She insisted on hanging herself on this tree in Yan Hezu. Long time no see, Mr. Ji. Yen Hezhou's voice was indifferent, greeting Ji Haicheng as before. Ji Xingqin didn't want to speak, so he nodded lightly at Ji Haicheng, as if he had already said hello. This perfunctory gesture ignited Ji Haicheng's inner anger. He looked at the hands of the two with their fingers clasped together, his eyes becoming even more mysterious. After a moment, he asked softly, Does it have to be Yan Hezhou? Ji Xingqin lazily lifted his eyelids and asked, hooking his lips, must it be Shen Manqing? Ji Haicheng's face suddenly turned black. He didn't expect this daughter, who had always been weak and deceitful, to become so stubborn now and openly reveal the name of his current wife. Seeing that he didn't answer, Ji Xingqin smiled and turned his gaze to the middle-aged woman next to him, who also had a green face. She dressed in a very intellectual and gentle manner, while also taking good care of herself. It seemed that Ji Haicheng had spent a lot of money on her these years. Ji Xingqin said, We are here to congratulate Song Qingfeng and Ji Mingyue on their happy marriage. There is no need to continue with anything else. We wish you a long and happy life together and a hundred years of good union. Yan Hezu said, Well, we grow old together, and a hundred years of love. Singing in unison without sincerity. Su Yen took the lead in applauding and said, Right, right. Let's grow old together. A hundred years of love. Everyone silently glanced at Song Qingfeng, whose face was as black as Bao Qingtian's, and forcefully stopped raising her hand. They also saw Su Yen bulging up and calling on everyone to join in, even frowning and winking. This is awkward, 
neither applauding nor not applauding. Song Qingfeng gave Su Yan a cold glance and was stared back. His proud expression seemed to be saying, Don't stare, I'm here to smash your scene. Naivety. End of this chapter. Chapter 6. Be careful of the machine. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 6 Be careful of the machine Song Qingfeng walked up to the elders with Ji Mingyue, his calm and composed demeanor as if the previous emotional fluctuations were all illusions. Thank you for your blessings, he said Yan Hezhou didn't have such a good temper when he saw him. I hope that when I get married to Xingxing, I can also receive Song Xiao's blessings. Song Qingfeng's forehead twitched and his gaze slowly fell on Ji Xingqin. If she wishes, then I will say, he said he still believes that Ji Xingqin is just angry with him because of Ji Mingyue's presence, and the Song family's upbringing does not allow him to be subservient to women. Therefore, he repeatedly tolerates Ji Xingqin's stubbornness, even if she lowers her head to find Yan Hezu to lie and get married just to stimulate him. Song Qingfeng's indifferent gaze gradually became gentle, and Yan Hezhou's eyebrows furrowed as he watched, calmly blocking Ji Xingqin behind him. Really? Thank you for your blessings, then. Ji Xingqin suddenly spoke, with a smile on his face that remained the same as before, as usual perfunctory and casual. She has no interest in Song Qingfeng, as everyone can see. It was also because Ji Haicheng used to like to joke with younger generations, which led Song Qingfeng to think that Ji Xingqin was just a bit arrogant and wouldn't look down on him as an excellent young master. Song Qingfeng's face turned black again, and he looked at Ji Xingqin's smile, feeling only heartache and anger. Yan Hezu was in a good mood and said, after we finish speaking, we'll leave first. The two of them acted in unison, turned around and walked towards the door. Without taking two steps, Song Qingfeng gritted his teeth behind them and said, the banquet is about to start. Don't you finish it before going back. Ji Xingqin didn't look back, ignoring the struggling and angry eyes behind him. No, the elders are still waiting for us to come over for dinner. This sounds like an excuse to Song Qingfeng. The Ji family has a sparse population and is now at the forefront of the situation. Ji Xingqin has no other elders to associate with. He walked directly to the two of them and blocked the way, standing straight with stubbornness all over his body. Even if we were friends for many years, it wouldn't work, he said Ji Xingqin didn't even glance at him, pulled Yan Hezu around and coldly threw down two words, no way. Song Qingfeng felt a little flustered and wanted to reach out and hold Ji Xingqin to stop her steps. Just as he was about to touch her, it was Yan Hezhou who timely protected Ji Xingqin in his arms, looking at his outstretched hand with a gloomy expression. I remember saying last time, please stay away from my wife, he said Song Qingfeng was stunned by his gaze and was about to speak when he heard an extremely impatient male voice coming from behind. I've been waiting upstairs for a long time, haven't you finished yet? Ji Qingyan strode into the venue, his cold black eyes scanning the guests. He deliberately paused on Ji Haicheng for a while, then sneered disdainfully and stood on the other side of Ji Xingqin to look at Song Qingfeng. Do you have any thoughts about my niece? Forget it, you don't deserve her. Ji Qingyan never knew what affection was, and after speaking, he directly looked at Ji Haicheng's pale face. Are you right, former brother. In. Law? Ji Haicheng felt like his brain was about to explode. Why did the two people he disliked appear in front of him one after another? You still have to say hello. Ji Haicheng had done enough psychological construction for himself, and as soon as the long dot awaited phrase, long time no see, came to his lips, Ji Qingyan led the two younger generations straight away. Suddenly, a stranger man popped up and called Ji Haicheng his ex brother. In. Law. Many people secretly pondered who that person was. After a while, someone remembered. The Ji family once had an adopted son named Ji Qingyan, who seemed to have been sent abroad by Mr. Ji after beating up Ji Hai's complete set of burlap bags. Unexpectedly, Ji Xingqin also had contact with him. Ah! Why did he, as his brother.in.law, 
go and put on a sack to beat up his brother. In. Law. Who knows, it all happened many years ago. Whispering gradually turned into open discussions, and Ji Haiching's face became increasingly gloomy. As a party involved, he was the clearest about this matter. In business, the vision and methods revealed by Ji Qingyin did indeed crush him, and this person was also the heir recognized by Mr. Ji himself. He was also Mr. Ji's son. In. Law who entered the family, only worthy of being the CEO of a small company, and could not even touch the threshold of the Ji group. No matter how roundly he tells his wife, the door of the Ji group has never been opened to him. Ji Haicheng was well aware that Mr. Ji was on guard against him. So he cruelly planned a scene. He knew that Ji Qingyan was once a street fugitive, and after being brought to the Ji family, he began to educate and change his mindset. At that time, he even wrote a commitment letter to Mr. Ji, and he no longer acted recklessly to solve anything. Ji Haicheng took advantage of this and deliberately found his lover whom he kept in his heart. He passionately kissed and confided in Ji Qingyan, belittling his current wife's incompetence and romantic acumen countless times, and then he succeeded. Ji Qingyan acted on him, broke the agreement, and was sent abroad by Mr. Ji with a disappointed face. He also successfully touched the door frame of the Ji group. Who knew that Mr. Ji never gave up on Ji Qingyan, but instead had great confidence in this ambitious and ambitious adopted son, and gave him the funds to fight abroad. Jiang is still old and spicy, Ji Xingqin calmly commented after listening to these stories. She grew up under the guidance of Mr. Ji from a young age, and sometimes she couldn't help but marvel at her grandfather's accurate judgment of people. Ji Qingyan remained noncommittal and sat cross-legged in a chair. If you have anything you want to do, go do it. My uncle is very busy next, and I have to avenge him for what happened back then. Ji Xingqin smiled and said, It's better to make a big fuss, I can handle things conveniently. Ji Qingyin raised his eyebrows, his face full of fighting spirit, and looked at his nephew and son. In. Law, who had been sitting on the edge peeling shrimp for his niece. Hajo, are you afraid? The serious looking man lifted his head, trying his best to restrain the madness and hatred in his eyes. Under the gentle gaze of Ji Xingqin, he smiled calmly and said, You're joking, what you should be afraid of is them. After years of hard work and hardships, I rose to fame in one fell swoop, and not everyone can understand the hardships and obstacles involved. Ji Xingqin picked up chopsticks and picked up a piece of beef, handing it to Yan Hezhou's mouth. Don't peel it, come and eat the vegetables, he said after peeling the last one in Yan Hezhou, he placed the plate full of shrimp meat in front of Ji Xingqin and nodded gently, hmm. Early in the morning, Su Yan carried a gift to Ji Xingqin's wedding room. Led by the butler, she walked into the villa and saw a glass display cabinet hanging on the relief wall facing the door, containing two small red notebooks. She was curious and walked over to take a look. It was the marriage certificate of the owner of the wedding house. Su Yen sighed, Yen Das Ho is infatuated. She was about to turn around and go to the living room when she suddenly saw a small gray dot on the edge of the glass display cabinet. Su Yen feels so uncomfortable in her heart. Subconsciously, I wiped my handkerchief with me and saw many password input prompts popping up on the glass surface. Su Yen was stunned, but upon closer inspection, she found that there were still nine non-identical ones. The butler stood next to him, with a habitual smile on his face. When he saw the guest turn his head and point to the small gray dot, isn't this intentional design by Yan Hazu? The butler smiled but remained silent. Su Yen 6. End of this chapter Chapter 7 Double White Moonlight you are listening at Novel Full. Audio. The source has no content or has errors. Chapter 8 Miss Xiao. Ma Ma, there was a day at my birthday party this year. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 8 Miss Xiao. Ma Ma, I have an angel at my birthday party this year. In Ji Xingqin's view, it's just a simple greeting from a friend he hasn't seen in years. 
The other party's meticulous plan was also eager to expose everything that Song Qing had done to him, and of course, Ji Xingqin had to show his position. Anyway, she would never be with someone who indirectly killed her mother and grandfather. That's why she directly announced her marriage to Yan Hezu to the outside world. Ji Xingqin looked indifferent and said, It's okay this way, otherwise I have to worry that it's a former family friend, and it's inevitable that I'm tied up. Ji Xingqin has always been indifferent to unimportant matters. The truth brought to her by Ji Mingyue is also helping her avoid some necessary troubles. Since she likes Song Qingfeng so much, let her take good care of his heart. It's not good to keep pestering her, as it's not conducive to building good family trust. The two of them sat in the living room chatting for a whole morning. Before Su Yen left, she patted Ji Xingqin's shoulder and said, as long as you have a plan in mind, remember to be there tomorrow. My friends and I will be waiting for you at the club. After the communication in the capital, many people can't remember each other's name when they meet Ji Xingqin, which is also a reliable example of Su Yen. She said that there will be a little sister's birthday tomorrow, and invited some friends who have good relations to come and get together. I heard that the little sister's is still a loyal fan of Ji Xingqin, so she would take her there at any cost. Ji Xingqin shrugged his shoulders. There was nothing to do on either side, so he could go there. At noon, the sun was bright and Ji Xingqin, accompanied by a bodyguard, arrived at the entrance of the club that had been arranged with Su Yen. She walked in wearing high heels and was led by the staff to the private room where Su Yen was located. Su Yen received the message and stood closest to the door, smiling as she walked in, holding her arm and introducing her. There were only about twenty people in the private room, most of whom were girls, surrounded by everyone. The most exquisitely dressed one couldn't even move his eyes when he saw Ji Xingqin. Su Yen was so skillful in dealing with such an occasion that she took Ji Xingqin straight to the birthday star. This is the little sisters who celebrated her birthday today, Zhao Wan, the second daughter of the Zhao family. She was in the same class with us in junior high school. Ji Xingqin smiled friendly and gave Miss Zhao a beautiful blow. Miss Zhao was excited and incoherent, most of the students present today are junior high school students. Hmm. I'll take you to a designated spot. She wants to talk to her idol about things from middle school, but she can't even remember them clearly. At this time, it would be awkward to mention in front of Ji Xingqin if she can't remember them too well, wouldn't it? Miss Chao stopped talking in time and took Ji Xingqin to a relatively quiet position that had already been arranged. Ji Xingqin was also arranged by her. After sitting down, Su Yen began to liven up the atmosphere, and everyone's attention gradually shifted away from the beauty's face, focusing on celebrating the birthday of the birthday star. Sitting on the sofa watching the crowd playing and laughing, Ji Xingqin vaguely remembered that he had a similar period of time when he was a child. Those memories were all about Yan Hezu, and he was different from his own obedience. He was a person who had been unconventional since birth. He brought with him several rare moments of sincerity when he was young. Ji Xingqin smiled and remembered the morning kiss he pinched when he went out to work in the morning. He whispered softly, Fool. After cheering and laughing, Su Yen came over and pulled her to watch the birthday star cut the cake together. Miss Zhao blushed and trembled, handing her delicate knife to Ji Xingqin. Miss Ji, can I ask you to help me cut the cake? Ji Xingqin couldn't help but laugh and cry. She thought she wasn't as good as everyone had imagined, so she took a step forward and grabbed Miss Zhao's hand, sharing the cake with everyone present. Happy birthday! I wish you happiness every day in the future. Ji Xingqin held a small piece of cake filled with strawberries and sincerely wished Miss Zhao well. Beauty in front, every frown and smile touches the heart. Miss Zhao was so excited that she couldn't even hold the plate steady. With your words, I will definitely be happy every day. Ji Xingqin was taken aback for a moment, staring at the other person's sparkling eyes for a moment. She curled her lips and smiled brightly, as delicate as a summer rose. Her voice was calm and gentle, then let me add one more thing. Every day is healthy and smooth sailing. 
Miss Zhao's dear paws were pounding wildly on her chest, and tears were about to come out of her eyes. Miss Zhao. Ma Ma, I have an angel at my birthday party this year. Ji Xingqin had some impression of Miss Zhao, as if she was also an art student. She often encountered her on her way to the studio in middle school, but at that time Miss Zhao was a very shy girl. Every time she met Ji Xingqin, she was always shy and hesitant, to the extent that many people secretly suspected that Miss Zhao's sexual orientation was not right. Since returning to China, Ji Xingqin has had little communication with people he used to know, and has not actively learned about what his childhood friends are doing now. All right, all right, please keep it safe, Su Yen lightly patted Zhao Wan's shoulder. I happen to take advantage of everyone being present, so I want to ask everyone something. The people who were talking and laughing looked at Su Yen in confusion, but couldn't figure out how Miss Su remembered to come to them for help. Zhao Wan clearly knew in advance and was eager to express her position in front of her idol, let me tell you. After all, our Zhao family is also a participant in the Meteor Shower Plan. Meteor Shower Plan Named after a very low-dot-key charity organization in recent years, with the meaning of bringing hope. The young masters and ladies present at home are all able to rank high in the capital city, and their families will participate in some charity activities to enhance their family's reputation and stock market. Meteor Shower has only been established for five years this year, but it ranks in the top three on the international charity rankings every year. Although it never publicly discloses its internal participants, no one dares to underestimate it based on its annual amount of billions. Zhao Wan smiled slightly and said, In recent years, society has developed rapidly, and many places have formed regional disparities. The Meteor Shower Plan was established within the organization three years ago, with the aim of helping disabled and impoverished areas expand their horizons and support regional development. Zhao Wan At present, the funds and manpower supporting the Meteor Shower Program have been in place. Another thing I would like to invite you to do today is to promote it to the public as the initiator of the program. After listening to Zhao Wan's words, everyone remembered that a few years ago, they seem to have been invited by Su Yen to join a charity organization as individuals. Later, after binding their bank cards, everyone forgot. Anyway, every year, they would automatically deduct around 1 million yuan, and they were not lacking. Su Yen is the most face-saving person, and the first to express her opinion, I will not give up on the third position. Someone was even more puzzled when she said this, who is the first and second. End of this chapter. Chapter 9. Soft Fragrance Why You. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. The source has no content or has errors. Chapter 10. Don't Tease Me. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 10. Don't Tease Me Later On. Ji Mingyue intermittently used those things to stimulate Song Qingfeng, causing a new round of torment. There was so much commotion inside that Ji Xingqin couldn't leave. After Song Qingfeng left, Ji Mingyue showed her red marks as a winner and asked her, How are you feeling after knowing the truth? It can't be any better. Ji Xingqin didn't answer her question at the time, leaving a sentence that your voice was really unpleasant. He carried his bag and left. Looking back now, besides awkwardness, it's also awkward. She, Ji Xingqin, has been educated by the top elite since childhood. Not to mention cursing, she doesn't even know how to speak harshly. For the first time in my life, being forced to hold my head down and listen to such a thing won't make me feel particularly happy, especially when I was brought out by Yan Hezhou to speak alone. And Yan Hezhou, who had always been irritable, saw that she didn't react and began to bite her collarbone even harder, causing Ji Xingqin to exclaim in surprise and quickly explain, I wanted to call you back then. Yan Hezu kept moving, obviously he was not satisfied with this explanation. I didn't see anything, she deliberately stuck in time and asked. I can't even wear headphones, Ji Xingqin continued. Ji Mingyue wanted to show off to herself how much she knew, but she also deliberately wanted to stimulate Song Qingfeng. A woman who can act coquettishly has a better life. 
Even if she goes too far with her words, it's just jealousy in Song Qingfeng's ears. Plus, Song Qingfeng didn't know that Ji Xingqin was on the terrace, so he let Ji Minghua speak. Yan Hezhou was shocked to hear this and rubbed Ji Xingqin's waist in her ear, what else do you want to see? The dangerous and low voice pressed against his ear, shaking Ji Xingqin's guard with a thud. Speak. Yan Hezhou was dissatisfied with Ji Xingqin's silence and lightly bit the earlobe of the person in his arms, as if continuing without answering. Ji Xingqin regained his senses from the pain, and his watery eyes turned to see Yan Hezhou's ears, which were slightly red under his black hair. She learned the movements of Yan Hezhou and successfully froze the people on her body. She pretended to be dead and lay on her shoulder to breathe. The hot Ji Xingqin was burning all over. My whole body is restless. He's not as good dot looking as you are, I don't want to see him, Ji Xingqin paused with a smile on his face as he watched Yan Hezhou's neck gradually turn red. I was just thinking, if the characters in the scene were changed, would your voice sound better? Yan Hezhou remained silent, leaning against the soft person in his arms. He bit Ji Xingqin with some grievances and whispered in her ear, You only know how to bully me. After speaking, he quickly got up and before Ji Xingqin could react, he strode into the bathroom and closed the door. In no time, Ji Xingqin heard the sound of water. She smiled and flipped over to touch her phone, quickly sending a message to Su Yen. Ji Xingqin. There shouldn't be a fifth person who knows about the Venus Hotel, right? Su Yen paused at the news and quickly recalled and calculated all the insiders involved in the matter, except for the two parties involved and her, the remaining one. She seemed to have just told Yan Hezu's former attendant. Li Hui, I'll go find him to settle the debt. Are you okay? Su Yen regretted and quickly sent an apology message. During their school years, their triangular relationship seemed to be the most heart-wrenching. Ji Xingqin and Song Qingfeng, childhood sweethearts, had a good relationship from a young age in everyone's eyes. At that time, almost everyone thought that Ji Xingqin would marry Song Qingfeng in the future, but who knew that they would end up in Yanhezu? Two men with equally good appearances and family backgrounds engaged in private fights over each other. The most serious incident was when Yan Hezhou took Song Qingfeng to the hospital. As for the reason for the fight, the two of them rarely had a tacit understanding. Everyone only knows that these two people hate each other, so much so that they wish each other didn't exist. At this moment, Su Yan was deeply regretful. She was not unaware of Yan Hezu's temper. She had thought that Li Hui would be strict and not say anything, but who knew that he had secretly told Yan Hezu? She huddled under the blanket, holding her phone, caring for her good friend who might have been hurt due to her momentary negligence, and then sent a scolding to Li Hui. The original purpose of saying this was just to make Li Hui cause some minor obstacles for the Ji family, as they are also competitors in the same industry. Now that Yan Hezu knows, it has become a major obstacle for the Song and Ji families. Ji Xingqin was in a good mood. He glanced at the direction of the bathroom and tilted his head for a moment, thinking, I'm fine, but he doesn't look very good. Su Yen was surprised and said, Are you jealous? No, 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 no. I have become the culprit who destroys your relationship. Ji Xingqin said, No. He always says that my health is not good, and he wants me not to bully him and tease him. Su Yen remained expressionless and said, Is it popular to trick dogs into killing them now? You shouldn't have replied to her messages in the middle of the night. Sad and hurtful. She paused and then sent a few messages, but this also fits Yen Dashao's usual work style. Although he fights fiercely, he never takes advantage of others. Song Qingfeng's dog coin is different. He always uses dirty tricks, despicable. Shameless. Ji Xingqin looked at the exclamation mark on the screen and gestured as she was about to reply when her phone was taken away by someone. She noticed that the mattress behind her had sunk a bit and was then held in her arms. Yen Hezhou saw the news on the screen, and Su Yen dismissed Song Qingfeng as worthless. She sniffed, 
pressed her voice and sent it to him, it's very good, but don't talk to my wife roast in the evening, which is not good for her health. Su Yen quickly said good night and turned to Li Hui to roast. Ji Xingqin turned over and looked up at Yen Hezhou's fiery eyes. A hint of coldness emanated from the man's body, followed by a pitch black scene before his eyes. Only Yen Hezhou restrained his hoarse voice and said, Don't look, go to sleep. He is really shy easily, even though he is two years older than himself. Ji Xingqin knew she couldn't really continue teasing, so she huddled in her arms, closed her eyes and slept peacefully, sniffing the familiar and pleasant scent of roses. She vaguely remembered the first time they met. In the rose garden of midsummer, Ji Xingqin, who was only five years old, saw Yan Hezhou sitting on the stone steps crying. The first time Xiao Ji Xingqin saw such a good dot looking little brother, whether she knew him or not, she leaned in and started talking to someone. Xiaoyan Hezhou said that today was his birthday. He wanted to take a picture with his mother, but his mother had died. She couldn't bear to see her little brother cry, so she volunteered to help him draw it. At that time, she couldn't even hold her pen firmly, and the result was that the two children squatted on the white sand in the garden and drew a small stick figure all afternoon. Ji Xingqin is a person who keeps her promise very well. If she promises, she will do it. When she returns home, she tells her grandfather that she wants to learn painting. After achieving some success, she realizes that she has never seen Yan Hezhou's mother before. It seems that she had not seen Yan Hezhou much before entering junior high school. End of this chapter